Gopher fans, and welcome to the Point U Podcast, Episode 2. I'm EJ Stevens, the Team Sports Information Director, and today I'm joined by redshirt junior outside Taylor Landfair and sophomore outside McKenna Wooker. Guys, this is going to be fun. I'm glad we could do this today. Me too. Um, so we'll go through a couple things today. We'll talk spring volleyball, the Hawaii trip. We'll talk Team USA, and also a little bit about the Big Ten schedule drop before we wrap it up with some fun. Uh, Taylor, we'll start with you. Can you uh, just introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, your position, and then your major in the classroom? So, hi everyone. My name is Taylor Landfair. I'm from Plainfield, Illinois. I'm a junior, going to be a rising senior, and my major, I'm in a dual major in graphic design, business, marketing, and education with a minor in sustainability. And McKenna, how about you? Where are you from and uh, position, or sorry, you're in school, then major. My name is McKenna Wooker. I am going to be a sophomore outside hitter, and then I am from Brookfield, Wisconsin, and I am majoring in sports management. Awesome. We've got some awesome student athletes here. Team had almost a 3.5 GPA in the classroom this year. Absolutely crushed it. And we're hoping to have a fun season on the volleyball court again. So with that, let's talk about spring volleyball. This was obviously a huge change this year uh, in the Minnesota volleyball program. Coach Yu McCutcheon stepping down, and then Keegan Cook and his staff coming in and taking over in December. Um, so let's let's kind of rehash this spring. Taylor, we'll start with you. How much was an adjust? How much of an adjustment was it for you volleyball wise um, in working with the new staff here in the spring? I think in general, it's just getting kind of used to the way that they coach us. And then they ask us a lot of questions. So kind of just getting acclimated to making sure that we're always on top of what we're supposed to be doing and then what we're supposed to be knowing and then making sure we're always remembering what they're telling us in the film rooms and stuff like that. And also, I think that we're not as technical as we were before. So I think just kind of adjusting to that and just focusing not solely on our outcomes, but just making sure that we're still focused on our process. Definitely. McKenna, how about you? What were some of the biggest challenges that you feel like you went through this spring as you adjusted to a, a new style with Gopher Volleyball? Yeah, I would say the challenges, like Taylor said, were not as technical. So I think just focusing on the process and the way like this coaching staff coaches is a lot different than the past. So adjusting to the new styles, new personalities, getting to know them off the court as well and like how we can talk to them, how we can grow our skills. I think that's a really big change. And I also think our practices are a lot more like fast paced and upbeat. So like getting used to that and instead of like going through the motions a lot, I feel like we've done in the past. And this is more like intense and upbeat and like a lot more fast paced. So those are two of the biggest ones that I recognize a lot. Right. And then what's it been like off the court? Like I know the coaches have made a huge effort to like meet with you guys and connect with you. Um, so what are some of the things that they've done with you to kind of help make everyone like feel welcome in this new era of go for volleyball. McKenna, we'll start with you. Yeah, I would say like all of the coaches reach out individually. Like I think after practice every day, I always am getting a call from Keegan or a FaceTime from Keegan. Um, Kristen, we get coffee, we get food a lot. Kai, same thing. It's more of like a kind of like going out to eat and talking at a coffee shop kind of thing. Eric, honestly, just I text Eric a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't really like talk or yeah. like call him or anything or go out to eat so all of the coaches have like a different type of style which I really like because a lot of it's like some of it's on the phone but a lot of it's in person which I like so it's kind of like a balance of in between and it helps with a lot of our time yeah Taylor what would you say what what are some of the ways that you've gotten to connect with the coaches too I think as a team I want to talk about a little bit I yeah. think that they really tried to make a big effort in making sure we have a lot of team functions and so they had us go to top golf and they had us do like a like a mystery like find the clue kind of thing so i think that that really helps us build chemistry one but then also be able to just have us have more free time outside of just always focusing on volleyball with our coaches yeah that's been nice yeah that's been awesome yeah and then of course one of the first things the team did is a few weeks of spring practice but then there was a trip to Hawaii where the team got to spend a week in Honolulu playing two matches, uh, two matches against Hawaii. So, Taylor, take us through those matches because those obviously weren't streamed on TV. It was just live stats and go for volleyball Twitter. But they were both five-set matches. So, like, what was that intensity level like of those in the spring? It was honestly kind of crazy because we didn't really go in knowing anything about Hawaii. We didn't have a sailing report. We really didn't have anything that we were kind of leaning on in terms of like watching out what they were going to actually do f towards us. So I think just kind of going in as just like a solid team and just focusing on gopher volleyball and then bringing in all the new things that we've learned from our coaching staff into that game. 
And so I know there was a lot of pressure and there was just like a lot of intensity, like you said, Mm -hmm. but I think kind of just, I think our biggest thing was just taking like one point by one point instead of kind of taking the whole thing as just like one big game, if that makes sense. For sure. McKenna, what did you learn about the team when we were, you know, in those like hard fought battles that you usually get in November and December in Big Ten play, but it was in the spring in Hawaii? Yeah, I would say like obviously it was our whole coaching staff's like first game in Minnesota gear. So I think they were really excited and they brought a lot of like energy and like positive vibes to our team before the matches. But I just remember like being in the fifth set for both of the matches and I just remember like I knew we were gonna win. Mm-hmm. Like it was kinda like that feeling, but I feel like last year in the past, like I'd never got that feeling. Mm-hmm. So I think there's just like a change in energy mm-hmm. in this team and this coaching staff that I think is really going to help us in fall. For sure. And then, you know, the team is in Hawaii. So there, it was a business trip. We're playing, we're practicing, but there's also like a ton of time for fun and team bonding. So let's talk like off the court. What were some of your favorite things that the team did in Hawaii? I think just being able to go to the beach and just going to different beaches. And I remember one specific night, we were at the beach, and then at the end of the day, instead of taking the highway route to go home, we took a scenic route, and so that was really cool. We got to see the whole shore and then all of the ocean waves and all that kind of stuff. So just kind of doing things that, you, I guess, you wouldn't really expect them to do. They kind of just pulled it from the back pocket and just like, hey, let's do this. I think this would be cool. Or, hey, let's just do this instead of doing this because I think it would give us a better experience. No doubt. Yeah. And then, McKenna, was it your first time in Hawaii? It was. This spring? Mm-hmm. Like, so off the court, what – I know you probably like to go to the beach too, but you guys also <laughs> tried, like, a ton of new food and did new yeah. things. Uh, what was your favorite thing to do? Definitely the different types of food. I love the food. We got so many acai bowls, and, oh, like, yeah, I'm an acai bowl girl, yes. so, like, just trying all of them and all the different restaurants that had them. Food, and then we were also really close to a mall. It was like oh, kind yeah. of an outdoor shopping mall, so like we were able free to go like whenever we wanted to. And there was a Lulu, so I oh, yeah. literally bought like five oh, things. And jacket. Taylor bought her first Lulu jacket, first which Lulu made thing. me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> this um, is not a Lulu sponsored podcast, but <laughs> it should be though. It, sh- yeah, it, it should, c- be. yeah. Lulu, let, me let us know. <laughs> that was exciting. That's fun. Mm-hmm. So overall, what would you say biggest? biggest takeaways positive takeaways that you had from the trip and that you took back to Minnesota with you that's a good question I would say like the different relationships I formed with different players like Mel was my roommate and I really just think it was it was really fun like I never really like knew her that well outside of volleyball Uh I feel like until I was we were roommates and we had a blast (laughs) like we ordered Taco Bell one night and it was so fun like we just talked about everything possible and it was Really cool. And then, like, being with the coaches, like, I was in Kristen's van. Like, we all got separated by vans. So, like, getting to know the coach that was your van driver, like, that was really fun. Oh, yeah. What and I think say? kind of the same thing with the van driver because Keegan was my van driver. Mm-hmm. driver. So just kind of being able to just joke around with him and then kind of experience more of his, like, jokey, funny, like, dad <laughs> side, I guess you can say. And then also just being able to experience how the coaches are during a game situation I think was cool because obviously we're going to see it in the fall. But I think kind of just getting a little glimpse of what it's going to look like before the fall actually happens is really nice. Right. So what would you say is going to be the identity of this Gopher Volleyball team? What What are fans going to be excited to see about this team and be like, wow, that's, that's fun to watch? I think, honestly, the way that these coaches have taught us thus far, I think that you're just going to kind of see a whole different side of Gopher Volleyball in terms of both technique but then also chemistry and high energy in that sense as well. And I think... I don't know, I'm just really kind of excited to just see the growth that our team continues to make because the amount of growth that we've made within that spring season was crazy. I feel like it's probably one of the most improved springs for myself personally, and I've kind of seen that for every single player as well. Right. Well, it's been a great spring for Gopher Volleyball. They got a lot done on the court and, and obviously a lot of team bonding with each other and the coaches. Um, but recently in May, both Taylor and McKenna had some fun and exciting trips that they went on. Uh, McKenna played with the U21 uh, women's national team in Mexico. So McKenna, I know you, I know both of you have, have had USA experience, but just tell us about that and what it was like to compete with the best college players in the country in that. Yeah, for sure. So we, I played in the U21 Pan American Games in Nogales, Mexico, and just being able to compete with 18 and counting training and the team that was actually made um just competing with all 18 of those girls like it was honestly such a cool experience and having friends that i'm going to be around for the rest of my life i think that's one of the biggest parts for me is 
forming relationships and building bonds with other girls from different schools because when we play them, like it's going to be like kind of like a friend reunion and I really enjoy that. But just being able to represent USA and wearing the red, white, and blue is such an honor and it's a feeling like no other. So just being able to represent USA for these past three years has been super cool. And then obviously winning gold is like the cherry on top. So. And I know there was a couple uh, couple Purdue Boilermakers on yes. the team as well that you're really good friends with. Was yeah. there any fr- like friendly banter about uh, about the Gopher Boilermaker games coming up? Honestly, last, we had a lot of the talk about last year's too, like when we played them first Big Ten conference game at their place and we got swept and then just coming back <laughs> to Minneapolis and winning in four. Um, there was a lot of beef about the first game because they swept us and I have I'm really close with both of them, so like I'm super excited for what this year's gonna bring because we already you already know we texted about it, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited. I love that. That's what makes it fun. Exactly. And then Taylor, you've spent a lot of time in the USA gym too. In March, you were in uh, California, I believe it was, um, competing. Kind of take us through that. Like, what does it mean to you to have that experience, like with USA on your chest and competing with the best in the country? I think it's really cool, just because. I think that the way that their level is is just a higher level than I normally am at for every single game in the Big Ten. So just being able to experience that and then also playing with all those other girls because there are so many good ones. And then also just getting to meet them off the court I think was cool because I really never knew too many of them besides obviously Melanie who was with there with me. Mm-hmm. So just being able to see like their personalities and knowing what they like and what they don't like and then being able to live with them in the house, I just think that was really, really cool. Right. So one day, would you both say that your dream is to compete like in the Olympics? Is that the the end goal for both of you? Yes. 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 <laughs> and how cool would that be to play together potentially? Yeah. Taylor and I. We'll see Roommates. what we'll see what happens. No, that's exciting. <laughs> okay. And then Taylor, you didn't compete with USA in May, um, but you had a really cool off the court experience going to the Black Student Athlete Summit at the University of Southern California. Mm-hmm. So tell us about that. What all went into that opportunity and and what did you experience there? So I first was going to go because Peyton asked me to go and I went with two basketball girls and then uh, gymnastics. And I think that was really cool because I got to listen to a lot of black professionals that are both in my field and then also in other fields around. And so just listening to their experience and then the different obstacles that they had to go through and then their advice that they would give me and just kind of their route and the different steps that they took to be able to be where they are right now in such a high spot in their specific position and in, within their organization, I thought was really cool. And then also just being able to talk with them one-on-one and then just being able to just kind of just be around all of them was really cool. And then I've never been around that many black people before. So I thought that was a really cool experience just because I'm really not around that many people of my kind all the time. And so just being in that environment was really nice because they related to what I related to as well, kind of growing up and then also right now in college. So hearing what they have to say and then being able to relate to that and just having that kind of bond, even though I don't really know these people, was really cool. Right. Mm -hmm. And you've been someone that has seemingly jumped and said yes at a lot of different things Mm -hmm. off the court. I know you went to um, the Big Life series Mm -hmm. in Selma, Alabama last year. Uh, I mean, just how important is it to you to kind of have that balance in your life and and have these new experiences that not a lot of people get to have? I think it's really important because at the end of the day, I'm representing my family and I do come from a black family. So just being able to represent my whole last name of Landfair, but then also all the women and men that have gone through so many different obstacles and experiences in the past. So I'm kind of just doing it also just for them, like all my ancestors and all that kind of thing. And so just making sure that I'm still like staying true to myself and where I came from and always just staying within my roots and always respecting those and just going out of my comfort zone to be able to also learn new knowledge so I can share that around campus. Definitely. Would you say like your parents are the ones who have influenced you most there to try those, those different things? Yeah. I always go to my parents first. I'm like, Hey, I want to do this. Like, what is your opinion? They're like, go for it. Do whatever you want. That kind of branches out and then makes me step out of my comfort zone so I can experience these new things because I always learn so much from them and I always have a good time. Right, that's amazing. Thanks. It's super cool the opportunities that not only are offered at Minnesota but throughout the entire the entire Big Ten, like the yeah. Big Ten, the Big Life Series, yeah. and then of course the Black Student Athlete Summit. Right. So it's been a great May for for everyone. It seems mm-hmm. like Mexico. You got to go to Southern California. I know you spent time in Florida, so yeah, a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. All right, now we'll get back kind of into more of a Big Ten. Big Ten volleyball side of the podcast. This is obviously a really exciting week for everyone involved with Big Ten volleyball, especially especially the Gophers. Mm -hmm. And the Big Ten schedule dropped this week. 
McKenna, we'll start with you. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of how, how did you feel when you finally saw like a schedule on paper? Like, okay, this is what it's going to look like. And it's coming in two months. I was so excited. I just feel like Big Ten is always the last one to come out. So like when I was at USA, everyone's talking about their schedules and everything. And all of us Big Ten girls are like, well, we still don't have ours. So just finally having like a schedule with like where we're going to go travel to this year or like who we're going to have at home. I was super excited. So what games would you say are marked on your calendar then, McKenna? Uh, first one is October 29th at Wisconsin, Halloween weekend. And, you know, Taylor and I want to do our Halloween <laughs> costumes again <laughs> on the plane. They were PB and jelly, uh, peanut butter and jelly last <laughs> year. Yeah, so it was great. and just like going home to the rival border battle on the road. We haven't won there in like a long time, like five years. So I'm super excited for that one. Other than that, like... Purdue, I'm super excited for. Um, Northwestern, we need to get oh, them yeah. back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so obviously any of the big games, Nebraska, Ohio State, Penn State, all of them. Definitely. And then, Taylor, for you, um, were there a couple games especially that you're like, okay, I'm circling that one on my calendar. I want to play that one. Definitely Wisconsin, for mm-hmm. sure, obviously. And then, honestly, all of them, to be honest. <laughs> I just can't wait. Every I just want to play every single one of them, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and then, you know, we have 10, 10 home, 10 road games. Mm-hmm. Taylor, let's talk about places to play in the Big Ten. Hmm. What would you say is like the craziest atmosphere that you've played a Big Ten game in? I think probably Wisconsin because it's just so loud. And then also their stands are really, really close to the court. And then it's a little elevated. So you kind of feel like they're kind of almost on top of you in a way. And it's also really hot in there, so it's really hard <laughs> to, it's, yeah, it's hard not to forget that. Definitely. What what would you say is your favorite place to play on the road? Hmm. I do like Northwestern's gym just because it's so big, and then it's really close to my house, so my family always comes. And then I also have a lot of friends from club, and then just from my area that always comes, so I really like going there. Right. You had a big game there a couple of years ago. Yeah, I did. <laughs> there like 25 kills at <laughs> Northwestern. Yeah, that was fun. Thanks. Um, so McKenna, how about you? Mm-hmm. I know you got a full Big Ten slate in last year, your freshman year. Yes. What were your favorite places to play on the road? I mean, obviously I haven't played at all of them on the road. So like speaking on the ones that we had on the road last year, yeah. my favorite places, honestly, I really liked Wisconsin just because it's the home state and it's like huge crowd. I like that a lot. I really like Nebraska's gym. I didn't realize it was going to be like as small as it was. I definitely thought it was going to be a lot bigger, but I don't know. I just like their gym. I like their fans. They're kind of mm-hmm. get rowdy a little bit, but honestly, those are my two favorites. And then like the hardest one to play at, I think was Penn State for me because they're like right on top yeah. of you and their student section was insane last year mm-hmm. and they were There's causing cool. us a lot of troubles. Yeah. So definitely Penn State. Yeah. They had the whiteout going for yes. our game yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Throws a little intimidation into it. Yeah. Um, so what about home games? I mean, there's a lot of great environments in college volleyball, but we all know the PAV is, is one of the best there is. Yes. Yeah. Um, Taylor, what's it like for you playing inside a packed Maturi Pavilion when it's really going? I love it. There's really, honestly, no other feeling. Like, no other Big Ten school can honestly give me that exact same feeling that I get when I'm at the PAV. And then you just have so many people behind you and supporting every move that you make, kind of regardless if you make a mistake or not. They're still there for you, and they're still going to tell you at the end of the day, hey, you did a great job. We're still going to support you. We still love you. So it's just like a big family environment. No doubt. Would you say a similar thing? Yeah, exactly like Taylor. They just, like, care so much about us. And, like, after the game, like, all of them, like, wait and, like, take Mm -hmm. pictures with us, tell us how good of a job we did and that they'll be at the next game. So I just think they're going to be there no matter how we do. Yeah. So has it been everything you expected it would be when you came in? Yes, for sure. And more. And more. Mm -hmm. I love that. Do you guys, let's go talk about your favorite game so far as a gopher. What is, would you say is the number one like memory you have thus far in terms of a game you've played? Sweeping Wisconsin at home. Facts. That's a good one. <laughs> yes. I was going to say the Ohio State last year when we won in four. Yeah. I that think one that was one was too. huge because. And sweeping Nebraska, yeah. honestly. Because that was just like, like a back to back. That yeah. was really good. Both yeah. of those two. Just because I don't think we've honestly played that good the entire season. And then yeah. just being able to bring that to the tournament was huge. Right. Yeah. And when you look at the schedule at the beginning of the year, everyone's like, oh my gosh, Minnesota ends with Ohio State, Nebraska back to back. Like, all right, we know we can yeah. get two, but we right. got to at least get one. And then to see the team like. Yeah, both. 
got both oh, of yeah. them. That was yeah, that was a fun end of the year. Oh yeah, a lot of great games, and hopefully there's going to be a lot of great ones oh, to yeah, come. For sure, yeah. All right. So we talked a little Big Ten volleyball. We got the schedule. One thing that Gopher fans may not know is that you two are going to be roommates this year. <laughs> and obviously you know each oh, other yeah. You know each other pretty well. I'm so excited. But here <laughs> on the Point U podcast episode two, we want to see just kind of how well they know each other. I got you down. I already know. I, I'm going to do so good. I'm not going to do very good. All right. So <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to play a little game. Um, it's a, a get to know you game <laughs> to test how well they know each other off the court. Mm -hmm. So each of you, if you want to reach down, you have a, a marker and sheets of paper under your chair. That's a nice paper. Yeah, it's a little card stock. We want to make okay. sure you're able to write on it. So, <laughs> all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask them, a qu or I'm gonna ask them a question, yeah, right, really big. and both of them are gonna answer the question, and we're gonna see what their answers are and if they know each other in those questions or if they don't you better know me <laughs> oh. i know you <laughs> all right we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna start with taylor so this what? one is the one mckenna well, you both of you will answer oh, what, oh okay yeah. okay okay gotcha but don't look at you. each other's answers yeah <laughs> okay what is taylor's biggest pet peeve Okay, don't show it yet. Wait, mine's kind of long. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. Something. This has. I, it might be. I don't I think got it's a few. right. I have Something. like two, three. It might be right. Everyone has a couple. I have a few. Sorry. Is your marker good? Yeah. Oh. Okay. This doesn't really make sense, but I can explain okay. what I said. Okay. 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 <laughs> McKenna, we'll have you show yours to the camera first. What is Taylor's biggest pet peeve? <laughs> And it it says when something Ooh. doesn't match. That's See, a good one. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's like I wrote down, but yeah. 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 When something like, because Taylor's like very into like organization and like everything has to like match. So, like yes. every time I like need advice for an outfit, I yes. ask her, and she tells me if it doesn't match because she's very into her colors and her yes. whole room See, is like the same color. Right. Yes. Exactly. Like everything has to match yes. and be like good color. <laughs> See, that was good. good. That was really yeah. really good. Okay. All right, Taylor. What was your <laughs> answer? Loud yours. Loud okay. chewers. Do okay. not like people who chew with That's their mouth fair. open. Mine was kind of good, though. Good. This is your pet peeve. It, it is. is there anyone yeah, on the team good. who fits who fits that uh, category? Yes. <laughs> don't ex you expose. Don't, you don't have to say. <laughs> Sydney. <laughs> Sydney does that. <laughs> we love our freshmen. But we do. <laughs> yeah, we love her. <laughs> all right, Sydney, if you're watching this. All right, girl. <laughs> um, all right, we'll go to the next one. <laughs> this one is for McKenna. All right, so Taylor, what is McKenna's favorite thing to do outside of volleyball? <laughs> Hold on. I hope this is right. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry. I'm oh, we got time. We no, got yeah, all the got, time we need. Time. A, K, A. Okay. All right. Taylor, what do you got for us? Hang with me. Taylor. <laughs> Why did I kind of say that? <laughs> what kind of, how accurate said, is that? Go to sporting events or hang with friends, a.k.a. T. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. All right, you nailed that one. Wow. <laughs> that was so good. See, it takes me a while AKA to write. me. <laughs> That's okay. I like the thought you're putting into yeah, it. Me too. All right. This one's for McKenna. What is Taylor's favorite shot to hit on the court? What do you got? Sharp cross. Oh, actually, yeah. I didn't say she that. She didn't though. write that, though. I said a roll shot to the belly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. <laughs> but that's a really good, that was my second. I was going to say slash cross, but 
Okay. You don't want to give away your secrets. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor's got a deep bag, though. Let's not I lie. Can't. You know, she's got a few. See, two of your favorite. One oh. and two. That's okay. That's, That's okay. right. <laughs> what is McKenna's pregame superstition? You one. definitely got this right. I definitely got it right. All right. Let's see what you got. <sighs> Me? Yep. You. <laughs> she changed her hair. She used to do a high pony. Uh, but now she has a low pony with an extra tight braid. And she has to use TIYs. And she uses two TIYs at the top and then one at the bottom. Not a TIY, but a ponytail. That was way more descriptive than me, but I said braid hair and slick back with wax. <laughs> <laughs> but I also I use wax. two TIYs and it has to be very tight. So yes. You went more in depth than I, I did. did. I did. Yeah, right. I think those are good <laughs> answers. <laughs> All right. Well, since we're running out of time, we'll do one more each. Okay. Before we close out episode two of the Point You podcast. Okay. So for McKenna to answer about Taylor, what is Taylor's dream job after volleyball? I don't know the details. You don't have to say the details. But. How do I spell this? Is it E R A R? E R. Okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope this is right. <laughs> oh, wait. I need to add another word. I think. Is that right? Ooh, Is that the right word? Evening? I think so. Okay. Okay. All right, McKenna, what do you got? Graphic designer. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Graphic designer with big brands. Sustainably. Let's go. Excellent. I am correct. You are right. Yeah, you guys are doing good. I know. Good job. Surprising. <laughs> you know each other so well. Um, honestly. <laughs> All right, last one of the day we'll wrap up with. What is McKenna most afraid of? I don't I know. I don't know if you know. I know, but I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. No. I don't know if you do. I know, I think. I've kind of put two on here. Okay. But it doesn't really have anything to do with, like, something like... A lot of people say it's like a common one. It doesn't really have anything to do with like sports. Like it's just life thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't know if this is right. I don't want to say that. <laughs> don't want to say that. <laughs> All right, Taylor, let's see what you got. No, no say I can't. Show it, show it. What do you mean you can't? He's dying. <laughs> I said heights and roller coasters. Oh. No, you know, like roller coasters that get really like. Yeah, but I didn't know if that was your fear. <laughs> I know you didn't like it, but I didn't know if it was your fear. Heights kind of scare me. Oh. I said dying. <laughs> I mean, both those, both those things can be scary, yeah. But yeah. You, I mean, you can die from a roller that's coaster. True. Okay, so I did get it right. Okay, that's true. <laughs> Half dying point. Dying is kind of scary, but I choose not to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's going to do it for episode two of the Point You podcast. Taylor, McKenna, thanks so much for joining. I hope you had a lot of fun today. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. All right, right, Gopher fans, we'll have captain's practices throughout the summer, and then fall camp will start the first week in August, and we'll be ready to go for the 2023 season. We'll see you later.